Hi everyone, this is Sarah Bagley from Ontario County 4-H and welcome to this Monday edition of the FLX 4-H Learning Launchpad. Today we're going to um, learn a bit about engineering and how to draw some cool stuff using CAD software. And we have two engineering students here um, to teach us all about that. Um, so take it away, Ryan and Rebecca. Hi, Sarah, thank you. Uh, hi guys, so like Sarah said, we're just gonna kind of today do an intro to engineering, specifically in the realm of engineers using CAD or uh, it stands for Computer Aided Design. Um, like I said, my name is Ryan Richter and I'll be graduating from Pensacola Christian College with a Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering and then I'll also uh, hold a minor in Computer Science. And I kind of picked um electrical engineering is my career path mostly due to the fact that um, ever since i was a little kid i always kind of had a bend for um, math and technology and kind of figuring out why and how things work and i just didn't know exactly what type of engineering i wanted to go into and so uh during high school um i started kind of researching different engineering career paths and um electrical engineering just kind of stood out to me mainly because it uh, dealt with, with both the hardware as well as the software and um, I kind of even saw that in my internships uh, these past summers um, the summer of 2017 I was with Barrow Corporation and I kind of dealt more with hardware side of things and then my internship uh, in summer of 2019 mostly dealt with um, kind of the software side of basically designing different switches and things like that and the logic behind it circuit design. Also, uh, like Sarah said, my name is Rebecca Maggie. Um, I am going to be graduating with uh, two degrees in uh, mechanical and electrical engineering. And kind of why I chose uh, engineering as my career path is it's very challenging. Um, it's definitely a difficult um, field to get into, but it's also very rewarding. And it's constantly changing. Um, technology changes rapidly. Um, there's always new uh, gadgets and things coming out on the market and an exciting uh, thing to be a part of. Uh, and engineers are always coming up with uh, fun and new exciting things. So I just kind of wanted to get involved in that. Um, and kind of why I chose mechanical and electrical engineering is um, just because they're very different, but they also work together. And I kind of like seeing the differences between them, but also how they kind of go hand in hand. And I'll be talking a little bit um, more about that later on in the presentation. Um, so you might be wondering kind of what do engineers do um, and engineers do a lot of things and so this slide's just kind of going to give you an overview of the overall. Um, basically an engineer uses science, technology, and math to solve complex problems um, and then there's six major branches and this is not to say uh, this is not an extensive um, list of everything. Um, but your main ones are mostly mechanical, electrical, chemical, civil, management. And with management, that could be something like, um, I have an internship right now with Gulf Coast where I'm the health and safety uh, engineer intern. So that's kind of the management side of making sure a company is up to code with, you know, different OSHA regulations and just basically their safety side. And then there's also geotechnical. Another one I would add that's not on this list is nuclear engineering that's becoming very um, popular these days. <clears throat> and then with these branches, there's also many sub branches. For example, with electrical engineering, um, you can even deal specifically with nuclear energy. And that's kind of what, when I graduate in December, when I start my um, job out in Idaho, that's mostly what I'll be actually dealing with power systems using nuclear energy on different substations. Um, so, like I said, basically, engineers. They address society's needs and problems by using the science, technology, and then obviously with science and technology, math comes into a huge play there. And um, kind of, I think everybody's mostly familiar with the um, meme that modern problems require modern solutions. And in essence, that's basically what engineers deal with, is they come up with, ah, I have a problem currently, and they're going to come up with a solution, whereas 10 years later, it may be a totally different problem, or they may need to even um, tweak 
a problem that they've previously worked on. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of go over a little bit of the differences between mechanical and electrical engineering. Um, these two branches of engineering are probably the most popular. Um, some of you probably know people who are engineers and most likely they're probably either mechanical or an electrical just because um, they are the most popular. Um, so I'm both mechanical and electrical. So I'm just kind of gonna break them up and uh, show you guys kind of the differences between the two and what they do. Um, so mechanical deals more with like structural uh, things, so like buildings, bridges is a common one that people automatically assume engineers know about uh, is bridges. Um, drawings, uh, mechanical engineers deal with a lot of drawings. Um, I had uh, an internship uh, with a uh, motor rewind shop and uh, I had to do some drawings, uh, mechanical drawings of different motors and components and things like that. And so a mechanical engineer could be like a drafting engineer and dealing with things like that. Um, they also deal with machinery, mechanisms, uh, movements of parts. Uh, they also deal with thermodynamics and fluids. And then a popular one is HVAC, which is your heating, air conditioning, refrigeration, stuff like that. N normal things you would see around your house. Uh, so electrical engineers deal more with power systems, so like power lines, you know, things that are actually powering systems in your house. Uh, electrical equipment, basically any any type of electrical equipment. Uh, computer programming uh, is another one that electrical engineers will deal with. They program uh, different things uh, to actually work uh, with programs, Elect microchips, things like that. Um, electrical component design is the actual like really small pieces that go into bigger electrical equipment. So that kind of goes hand in hand with electrical equipment. They'll be dealing with like resistors, capacitors, really small things, little chips. And then circuit design uh, is another big one. And that's kind of what we're gonna be showing you today a little bit. Uh, we're gonna show you uh, kind of a really basic circuit design that an engineer would do. Um, and one thing I'll kind of add, um, you might see kind of one of the big differences between mechanical and electrical is uh, mechanical, you can think of it as more like the physical solid things that you're building. Electrical, most times the concepts and what you're dealing with is kind of abstract thinking. You can't always envision it, whereas mostly with mechanicals, with your drawings and your different, you know, um, structures and everything, you're, you're going to be able to actually see it. Um, so you might be wondering what are some important skills for an engineer or if I want to start thinking maybe about an engineering career path, you know, maybe what, what should I become more proficient in? Um, obviously math, I think that goes without saying. Um, I think most everybody knows math plays a huge role here. Uh, computers too, especially with the advancements of technology, more and more things are becoming digital. So engineers, obviously they're working on technology, they're improving technology. So computers are gonna play a big role in that. Um, and then whenever you put computers and math, you're, you're already kind of dealing with critical thinking analysis. Um, you're using the computers to aid you in your analysis, to provide visuals, things like that. But um, not only is critical thinking important, you also have to have interpersonal skills. Um, engineers, they work in teams mostly. Very rarely will you just see one little guy off in a corner number crunching. He might do that for maybe, you know, let's say 60% of his um, day to day uh, responsibilities, but you know, the other percentages, he's gonna have to report that or present with it. And so that's kind of where communication comes in key. Engineers have got to be able to write and then also present their findings, um, their analysis, things like that. Um, types of software that aid in the presentation and things like that for engineers. Um, obviously, it's computer aid design. That's what we're talking about here. Um, do note that these computer aided designs, most of them, probably 90% of them, are going to allow the engineers to see things in two dimensional as well as three dimensional. Um, it's important to note that AutoCAD um, is mostly dealt kind of with more of the mechanical engineers will work with it or CAD would be something for electrical. Um, SolidWorks, um, it's very similar to AutoCAD except it's primarily used for 3D printing and so that, that software goes hand in hand with 3D printing. And then Lazy is um, an electrical 
programming or electrical engineers software that they would use. And LAZY basically stands for layout system for individuals. And it basically allows the engineer to have an overall concept for the layout of their electrical components before those components go to manufacturing. It's basically with the manufacturers, it's the files they look at to know, okay, this is how the engineer wants this capacitor made or resistor, something like that. <clears throat> um, engineers don't just use computer-aided design. They're gonna use uh, other types of software, and I'm gonna say other programs. Um, and one of those is gonna be MATLAB. And MATLAB is just basically a very advanced calculator that makes number crunching easy for engineers. It also will allow electricals to use it too in order to see Bode plots, things like that. Um, Excel Lab, um, again, I think I have said already that electrical engineers do, they do have to know general concepts of programming and that's where these kind of come into play. Arduino and MC Lab, they deal mostly with software writing to uh, program computer chips, microchips, uh, different aspects of that type of engineering. Um, so today, kind of the two demos we're going to be showing you of different CAD programs are ORCAD. Like I said, that's a mostly electrical engineers will use ORCAD um, to design and analyze circuits. And then Becca will talk more about the Autodesk, or I'm sorry, the AutoCAD. Um, and that kind of deals with mechanicals will use that for their drafting of designs and things like that. Okay, so before uh, we show you how to use the ORCAD software, we're just going to go over a couple definitions just to uh, make everything a little simpler and uh, let you guys know exactly what we're talking about. So first of all, what is a circuit when we talk about it? So um, circuits are used in Pretty much any electrical device you can think um, but just some examples are like the lighting system in your house um, so light switches um, all the lights in your room everything like that is on a circuit and so you're going to have to have um, power to power the circuit and turn it on for it to go throughout your whole house um, same thing uh, with the thermostat and all your heating um, and everything to do with that that's all on a circuit i mean even things like your cell phone your car those all require electrical circuits in order to function so that just kind of give you a, gives you an idea of what we say when we mean circuit. Um, so obviously the one we're going to be doing today is very, very simple and wouldn't actually be used in uh, practical everyday um, usage, but it just gives you an example of how to use the software and um, just gives a basic outline before you get into more complicated stuff. Um, another um, explanation uh, that we need to know is voltage, um, and voltage is the amount of energy needed to move a charge. And so basically you can kind of think about it as a battery. A battery has energy uh, that it stores, and then you can use that to power uh, devices and um, electrical things uh, that you might have um, are, can be powered by a battery. So you can think of voltage kind of as like a battery, a place where you can store energy. So then we have current and um, Current is measured in amps, and it's the rate of flow of charge through a circuit. So you can kind of think of it as a river. The current is flowing through uh, the circuit and carrying the charge with it. And then we have um, resistance, which um, we use resistors in our circuits in order to um, have resistance in the circuit. And it's the opposition the current experiences in the electrical path. So you can kind of think it as a speed bump. So as the current's moving around the circuit, and I'll show you that in the next slide, if it runs into a resistor, it's going to basically reduce the voltage that you have. So I'm gonna just click the next slide and kind of show you how that works. So here, this is a simple series circuit. Um, it's really basic, just to kind of give you the basics of what I'm talking about. So right here, we have a voltage source. Now, again, the voltage source, you can think of as like a battery. It's storing the energy for the circuit. So this is where the circuit starts. And then the current is flowing through the circuit this way, up like this, and then down. And it's going to end at ground. Ground is basically where the circuit ends. It's done. There's nothing more. Everything goes to zero. So your current's going to end and go to zero. Your voltage is going to be at zero here. So you have your voltage here, and your current's moving through here. Now, as your current moves, it hits this speed bump or resistor. 
So your voltage is 10 volts here, right? And it hits this resistor and then it's gonna reduce. So it's, by the time you get to the output, it has decreased because it hit the speed bump. So in order to figure out how much it reduced, we have to use this equation. Now this may look a little complicated for some of you, but it's, it, hopefully it will make sense. So we have um, R2 right here, which is 100K ohms and resistance is measured in ohms. So when we say 100K, K means 1,000. So basically you have 100,000 ohms for this resistor. So you put the 100K here for the R2, and then you have R1, which is also 100K. So you put R1 here, 100K, and R2, which is also 100K. So if you add these two together, that's 200K total. So you have 100K over 200K, which brings it down to one half, and then you multiply that by your VN. So your voltage in, again, is where you started the circuit. It's your stored energy here. So your 10 volts goes there. So you have one half times 10, which is going to give you five, which is your V out, which is right here. So that's how much this resistor reduced the voltage by. So your V in is 10, hits this resistor, goes down to five based on the calculations with these two resistors. Now, ORCAD, and we're going to see in the a little bit when we do this, ORCAD lets us um, see the output that we would get without us having to do this math. So it's going to show us graphically um, what the result is, what the V out is based on um, when we draw this into ORCAD and simulate it, it will give us the output without us having to use this equation. But I was just going to show you this so you can compare. Uh, when you pull up ORCAD for the first time, this is what you get. So you'll go into a new project and you can just name it something like simple series uh, circuit, something like that, something that you'll remember it by. Um, and then just kind of leave all this alone. You don't need to mess with it. Uh, for now, just do a create a blank project. And so this is what's going to open up your um, starting page or your overall uh, page that you'll actually draw on. Um, so for the first time, you're going to go into place and then part. That's where you'll put all your electrical components that you're going to use. Now, in our design, we just had one voltage source and two resistors. Um, I'm going to do a shortcut, but just to run you through, um, just so you know, in the libraries, uh, these are all your libraries. So they basically hold different parts depending on a certain category, something like that. Um, but you can see if I click on different parts come up and if you use the software, you'll become familiar with that. But I'm gonna do, do shortcuts just to um, kind of speed up the process here. Um, so we're gonna put in our voltage source and we're using direct current. So I'm gonna just put in the VDC as kind of the shortcut here. And uh, you can notice I can keep placing. And then in order to stop placing, I just hit escape on my keyboard and then just click out of outside over here to end the island. And then we had two resistors, so you'll just hit R in here, and then you can place your resistors uh, kind of wherever. Um, you'll then have zero, which remember I said that was your ground, it ends your circuit basically. Um, you can just hit escape there. Um, in order to actually connect everything, uh, we do what's called wiring the circuit. Um, but before you wire it, you need to rotate the circuit you go back to the PowerPoint here, notice this one is horizontal, this one is vertical. Another kind of abstract thing about electrical engineering is you have to remember that uh, current flows from higher potential to lower potential. So when we're in ORCAD, when I rotate this, you just click on it and you'll hit R on your keyboard. Notice you have a number, one, number two here and a number one on the bottom. Your number one is going to be your higher potential, so you'll just rotate it until number one is on top. And so now I can wire the circuit by hitting W and you're basically instead of connecting the dots, you're connecting the squares here. Oops. Uh, give me a second. Let's try this again. There we go. And then for now, you can just kind of skip over the, um, the ground because we'll just connect it here. Again, it's just wiring here and then I'm just kind of moving as needed. 
So you have the wiring, you need to name your voltages or your different components. So for here, I'll just name this V1 for my first voltage. And then we have two resistors. So name them something like R1 and R2 for your second one here. And then after you name them, you need to uh, put values on them. Um, so for here, we wanted 10 volts and that's based on the circuit in the figure on the PowerPoint, just so you know. And then here, we're gonna change this to 100K. And just so you know, I'm double clicking, um, it's the la left mouse button. Um, and that's how I'm pulling up the display properties. window. Okay, so at this point, your circuit is almost ready. It's important to name nodes and you'll see in a minute why. Nodes are basically anything in between um, two components. So like this would be a node here because it's between my input voltage source and my resistor here. This is another node because it's between the first resistor and the second resistor. And you want to name your nodes based on uh, what you're going to try, what you're going to try to simulate or find out. So in this case, this is, I'm going to just name this pin because it's my node that's dealing with my voltage input. And then I'll name this node out, and I'm going to put it here. And just, and just to kind of give you, again, basically we created the circuit where I have my input node here and my output node here. This is what I'm gonna be testing for, so that's why I named it that. <laughs> um, if you remember, I said that electrical engineers, they deal with programming side. This software deals with coding to run its simulation. And that's what the netlist is. So when I view the, or create the netlist first, I'm basically telling the software to go ahead and write the code based on this symbolic circuit. If I wanted to, I could just write a code and not even draw it. But for engineers, we like easy stuff. So we draw it and let the software write the code for me. So there you go. When I look at the code or the net list, you can see that my voltage source here, it's going from my higher potential to my lower potential, which was my zero. I'm grounding the circuit and it's got a value of 10. Same with my resistors, you got 100K and 100K. So at this point, you're ready to simulate. And so you would just go to uh, your PSPICE tab up here. You would do new simulation profile and just name it something like uh, circuit sim, uh, sim standing for simulation. It's important to note that when you're naming your simulation profile, you cannot have any spaces. So again, to create a solution to the problem of no spaces, Notice I just put an underscore to allow me to see it more clearly. You'll hit create, give it some time, some time to load, and you'll get this window. There's different types of analysis. For us, we just want to look at the direct current sweep. Notice my sweep variable, what am I looking for? I'm looking for voltage. So I'm, I'm basing it off of my input voltage, which we need to be one. Your start value is always going to be zero for the most part, because what you're sweeping is from zero to a certain end point. And your end value, most you're gonna always wanna put it over what your input is. So in our case, our input is 10 volts, right? So I'm gonna probably do 15 volts just so I'm not cutting it off. And then your increment is basically your scaling and it's gonna let me see from zero to five volts, five to 10 volts, and you'll see that. So once you're done with setting all that up, you'll just hit okay and you're ready to run your simulation. You hit the green button, give it a minute and you'll get a screen that looks like this. <clears throat> um, notice here's my sweep, it's from zero to 15 volt, volts, start value and value and that's my increment window. Um, in order to actually trace something and see my voltage, you just go to add trace, you can shut all the power currents, all of this, just uncheck them, you don't need to worry about them because uh, you're looking at voltage and you're specifically wanting to compare V in and V out. And those were the nodes we named. Notice you can see the node names in and out. And there you go. Um, notice there's a legend. Legends are important for engineers. It allows uh, people to see what is the engineer talking about when he's referring to things. And then obviously to read uh, the graph, you can see that my V in, which is the green line here, if I'm at 10 volts, what's my V out? And which is the red line, and you can see that it's five volts, which is what we calculated it for. So you might be thinking, okay, great, now what do I do with this? Well, that's where I said communication comes into play. 
um, engineers write reports based on their findings. And this is an example of maybe what a report would look like. Um, you know, you'd have your abstract and objective giving an overall of what was going on with the lab. Uh, the equipment and components used, you can see that here's our resistors. Background just gives general information, kind of um, theories, equations used in the lab. And then your experimental setup, test results, you know, you've got, um, <clears throat> Uh, notice there's always a title for all figures. So here's our design that we created. And then you've got your table of your net list and whatnot. And then your setup procedure, obviously, what did you do to create this? Um, this is just an example. It looks like in this lab, something else was calculated. Um, looks like a current is the purple line. Uh, tables. Um, one big thing here is your calculated value. Uh, what we did the math wise versus the simulation in ORCAD versus our experimental what was done in lab, we have percent differences. And most times engineers want lower than 2% and they consider that a good percent difference. And you can see what the formula is here. And then obviously you're gonna discuss and then conclude your findings based on all your values and everything like that. Um, and I'll just kind of go back to this real quick, just to show you guys that the five volts is sitting right here and the 10 volts is here. And when I look at the 10 volts, I can drop down and see that my V out is actually five volts. And that was based on when I pulled up here and calculated it using all this. So now I'm gonna turn it over to Becca and she's kind of gonna show you AutoCAD. Okay, guys, so I'm going to just real quick show you some of the stuff that you can do with AutoCAD. So like we said, AutoCAD is more of a mechanical engineering tool. Um, a lot of engineers use it um, for layouts and uh, design of like, uh, buildings and parts and things like that. So I'm just going to quick show you a couple of things that you can do. Um, so up here, obviously, it's a drawing software, so you have all your different shapes up in this corner which you can use. Um, so I'm just gonna show you a couple of them. Obviously there's a lot more you can do with it. Um, so the basic, uh, the most basic one you can use is the line. And so you can see here, um, the little crosshairs thing. Um, it says specify first point. Um, down here, this is your origin. Um, this is kind of like where it starts. So you have this point here is zero, zero, and then it extends up here and to the right this way. And so um, if I wanted to make a line that started at my origin, I would just put zero and that's my X axis. And this is my Y. And then I would just click enter and it has a the line starting here. So I can draw the line wherever I want. If you see um, the thing to the left that's highlighted, it says like 42-ish or whatever, um, that is the distance that this is. So if I move it, you know, closer, it gets less. And if I move it out, it's more. So let's say I wanted to make this, you know, say 20 units long, and then over here is my angle that it's at, so I can make it 45 degrees. And then I click that, and I have a line that is, what, what did I say, 20 units long and 45 degrees. Um, and then you can keep going uh, with it if you want to. Like, let's say um, another, you don't always have to click in the numbers. If you want to just pull it this way and make this 30 units long, you can do that. I can just point in the direction I want to go and then just click the number and it will just extend it out to that. Um, I can also do like a circle if I want to. Sorry, that's a dog barking. Uh, and I can make that a 15, uh, diameter of 15 for the circle. And then of course there's other shapes up here that you can use. So I'm just gonna delete these and show you another uh, really cool thing that you can do with AutoCAD, which makes it really useful and it's called layers. And uh, so what you can do is um, sometimes you're, you know, drawing something and uh, you might have a whole bunch of different lines, you know, overlapping each other and stuff and they're really hard to see. So what you might want to do is like, you know, make one, like, let's say you were, you know, an HVAC engineer and you're trying to, you know, make all the different pipes and ducts in your house. Well, maybe you make the pipes one, one layer and, you know, the ducts a different one and then you can shut off the ducts and just see the uh, pipes. So I'm going to kind of just show you how that works. So here, I already have a couple examples made. Uh, so you can, here I made this one layer one. I'll just show you how to make another one. So let's say I, I have layer one and layer two. Let's say I wanted to make layer three. 
and you can see here you can make some different colors. And so I already have a green one and a pink one, so I'm going to make this one yellow. And always make them different colors because if you have them all like white or something like that, they're really hard to see. So you want them different colors so you know what you're looking at. Also here you can change the line weight. So I can make this, you know, really skinny or if I want it to be thicker, I can make it really thick. So I'm just going to make it, you know, something like that. And you can see here like this one's thicker than these two. And so, okay, so then we can close this out. And so I can, let's say I want to make layer one. And I want to make a circle with this layer one. And I want to make it 20, uh, diameter of 20. Then I can go up here and I can click my second layer and I can make another circle inside of this one with a diameter of, let's say, 15. And then I can use layer three and make another one and make this one, let's say, eight. So there are, I have all these three circles inside of each other. So let's say I didn't want to see this uh, inner one, this layer three one, the yellow one. I can turn it off and it disappears from my screen. Now it's still there. I just turned it off so I don't have to see it. And then I can do the same thing with the other ones. Turn them off. I can turn them all off if I want to and not see anything, or I can turn them all back on. Uh, so that's how layers work, and that's really helpful if you have a lot of um, uh, lines going different places and things like that. And I'll show you some examples of some of the things that I've done before. Uh, but first, I also want to go over um, dimensioning. Dimensioning is really important because you know you could be an engineer and be designing something, and you have these circles and they're beautiful circles, but nobody knows what, what, what value they have. And so there's this really cool thing called dimension. And so you can click this and you just click the circle that you have and you can extend it out and it will tell you the dimension. It automatically dimensions it for you. Now the dimension's here, but it's really, really small and you can't see it. So I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to click on the text. So you can see that it says 40. So I'm going to click on that and up here you can see in the corner you can make it bigger and so I'm going to make it like 0.8. Okay that's still really small. Make it two. Well that made it a little bit bigger but you can change the text and make it um, bigger and you can dimension the rest of them. And so that's something that's really important when you are uh, designing certain things so that people know what size they actually are. Now I'm just going to show you a couple examples of stuff that I've done. Um, this drawing here was an AutoCAD um, drawing that I did uh, for an internship at my, the Mo Motor Rewind shop that I worked at uh, called Gulf Coast. And this was a terminal box that we made. Um, so you can see all the different parts that I made for it. And also you can see that all of the um, components are dimensioned here. I have all the lengths of different stuff and how far away things are from each other. And also you can see up here, if you go to the layers, you can see the different layers that I use to keep everything organized. Um, one thing I do want to note that's really important is always use a title block when you are um, doing engineering drawings. This gives um, information to the people that you're sending the drawing to. Uh, it gives uh, the name of the company that I did it for and then names of the people who are on the project and things like that, the project number. Um, another important thing to note is the revisions. You can see this one says revision Z. I mean, I probably redid this drawing like 20 or 30 times, I had to always keep changing it. They kept coming back with different stuff they wanted to add and things like that. And so uh, it's important to, every time that you make a change to a document, instead of just saving over top of the change, you want to actually re-save it and then make the changes and name it something. So this started at you know revision A, then I had revision B, and it just kept going on from there. That way, in case the uh, you know, company came back and said, oh, actually what you had before is what I want, then you can go back and you haven't lost any of your previous work. It's all right there. And so that's something that's also uh, really important to always do. Um, this other drawing that I did uh, was for the same company, uh, but I had a couple different responsibilities with the internship. Part of it was um, uh, making drawings like I just showed you 
um, for uh, like terminal boxes and motors and things like that. Um, another part of it was uh, health and safety. And so this is actually a drawing of our shop layout. And I had to uh, make fire escape routes for every room in the shop. And so uh, you can see here I have, um, you know, I had to have the primary route that's shown in red. And then I had to have a secondary route in case you know, there was a fire here, they could escape out this way. Um, but I had to do it for each room. So instead of making separate drawings for every single room, I just made different layers. And so you can see I have them named, you know, as to which room they were, and I just shut off the layers depending on what I needed. So you see, if I start turning these on, it just gets like really, um, really messy with all the different, all the different things. Like some of them even go the same place and they're all overlapping, and it's just really hard to see. So instead of just drawing them all together, I just um, drew different layers, and then you can just turn them off and just do certain ones. So that's kind of showing just the different things that you can do um, with AutoCAD. And again, there's a lot more that you can do with it. Um, so just going back to our PowerPoint, if you guys are interested in um, doing uh, some of the stuff that we've talked about, um, you can actually download the software for free. Um, so these are the download links for it. It should be pretty self-explanatory and it will show you um, all the different things you need for it. Um, and if you guys have any questions about um, any of the things we did or if you're interested in learning more and downloading the software, um, here's our email addresses and just feel free to ask us any questions about engineering in general or any of the software we talked about. Um, and just to mention, guys, um, I know some of the stuff that we talked about, especially here in the ORCAD, some of it was a little technical getting into the voltages and what all the inputs, outputs were. Obviously, you guys aren't going to understand that yet if you haven't done um, circuit analysis and you're not in those types of classes. But I just wanted to let you know that this isn't just something that you as a student engineering school is just going to design and write a lab report and never deal with the software again. Um, this software obviously is used out in the real world. Obviously, it's going to be for a lot more complex things. And most times what you're going to do is you're going to have little segments of little circuits like this. Like this circuit is extremely simple and nowhere in real life is this just one little circuit going to actually operate. This is used mostly as like to teach you how to, you know, learn about different equations, things like that. So it's an example circuit. But something like this, it's going to be built upon. And in one of our classes, Beck and I are in a class called VL, uh, it's VLSI design, which is very large scale integration. And it's using these little circuits like this, and then basically importing these ORCAD files into the software called Lazy that I talked about earlier to where we actually implement those. So um, I know, like I said, um, some of it may have gone over your head, but for practice with just these, and like Becca said, you guys can email us if you want, or if you're more comfortable with getting in touch with Sarah first or your local 4-H um, educator, you know, go ahead and get uh, in touch with them and, you know, maybe they can email Sarah or something like that. Um, look up YouTube. There are tutorials. If you go to the websites that Becca gave you, most times they will also have tutorials um, just to get practice. And if you're thinking about engineering, um, you know, kind of look into that and see, um, you know, if the snapshot of basically day to day what a maybe engineer would do if that's something that, you know, spikes an interest. In. So, uh, Sarah, we'll kind of give it back to you to close if you want. And we're going to go ahead and stop sharing our screen. Thank you, Ryan and Becca. Um, hopefully, everybody, this just kind of gives you a snapshot of what engineers do. And like um, Becca and Ryan said, um, some of this is technical stuff that they covered in their college classes, but the point was to give you kind of an intro to um, what engineers do because, you know, sometimes we, we don't quite understand what, um, what different professions actually are working on until we see it. Um, and like Beck and Ryan said, that, that software is free to download if you want to start playing around with it, um, practicing practice drawing some of the stuff that um, Becca and Ryan showed you. Um, you can even just take this video and once you got the software downloaded and just 
um, just go through the motions that Beck and Ryan um, did in their examples. Um, you know, and again, it's just to get you kind of familiar with with the software and what they do. Um, so thank you again, Rebecca and Ryan. And once again, if you they if you have any questions, um, they are very excited about what they do. They're very passionate about what they do. Um, so feel free to reach out to them. And uh, if you're more comfortable reaching out to your 4-H educator and having um, them get in contact with Beck and Ryan if you need help, um, that is fine as well. Thank you guys all for listening. And uh, I hope that you have fun if you decide to download and work with the software.